Hey guys, I've been watching a lot of toolbox tours on YouTube and it's kind of helpful giving you an idea what some guys use, what works for them, what doesn't. So I thought I'd go ahead and throw mine out there, see what you guys think. It's a Harbor Freight bottom box, just the one that's like $300 when it goes on sale. I know, Harbor Freight, hey, it works for what I need. I'm not a professional technician, just a do-it-yourselfer. And a smaller little old craftsman box on top. I'm planning on getting the, the top box for this because I've actually outgrown the bottom one. So that's in the future. I'm getting the top box maybe aside just depending on how many more tools I end up buying. Start with this top one. Of course you've got all your nice stickers. Very important. Top doesn't have a lot of it, just some paperwork, got some zip ties. This is like the one snap one thing I own. It's a bottle opener, uh, a guy game is a promo type thing. They've actually been out of the box. Uh, I said paperwork. There's an old there's a craftsman set back here that I got. I think somebody gave that to me as a birthday present. I just threw it in here. I've, I've got so many screwdrivers, I don't ever use it. Zip ties, like I said earlier. A whole lot of stickers and things. Let me change hands here with the camera. This is taking the cell phone piece of the quality's off. I apologize. I'm also new at making videos, so I apologize if the quality's not the best. I'm just slowly getting into this. Rancho, Jigs, B&M, all your, all your good ones. USA, very important. Alright, open this top drawer. Bits, all kinds of bits. Bits for impacts, you know, the adapters for 3 8 half inch quarter. I got a couple of each. Um, all kinds of bits. This is just ones I've just accumulated over the years. This wasn't a kit, I bought it just all different kinds. Different ones, you know. These are these are security bits from Harbor Freight. These have got me out of a couple of binds where for whatever reason there's a weird fastener. Mainly these torques. You can see a lot of you guys know, but these torques have like a an indent in the middle. And you need this special fastener to take them out. I've ran into this with like ignition components sometimes. Screws with coils or ICMs will have this on there because they don't want you to remove it for some reason. The only thing I don't like them is they're very, very soft. I mean, they're, they're hard freight. They're cheap to begin with. But if you actually use these on like a torque down fastener, especially this, these bigger ones, I broke a couple of these, they'll just strip right out. They don't have a lot to them. They're made for the low torque security actual bits. Just my warning to you guys on those. Cutters. This is a... Uh, different bits from my snap ring pliers. You can see it just comes with different sizes, different lengths, offsets, scrapers, coping saw blades. I do have some woodworking tools in here that I need to get out of here and make this just my mechanics box and get a smaller box for my woodworking stuff. I was more into woodworking and I've slowly started getting more mechanic repair work as I've accumulated more and more vehicles. Flashlights, you guys know flashlights look like this is one of those telescoping ones. It's got a light on the end, although it's at the current times but I don't need new batteries for it. But, you know, telescopes have to like three feet. Handy for getting those nuts and wrenches that you always drop on top of a transmission as you're buried in the back of the motor working on it. Uh, we got Teflon tape, a lot of Teflon tape, not really sure why. Electrical tape, Loctite, gasket maker, battery cleaner. Just all, all your basic automotive, you know, fluids and tape and stuff like that. Kind of a random junk drawer, infrared thermometer, works great for checking catalytic converters, make sure they're working. And also, I see them in coil temperatures, make sure they're not getting too hot and burning up on you, so it's causing your truck to shut off. Dental mirror, spark plug tester. I use this for blowing out heater cores. Uh, there's a couple videos out there, one of David's farm, I think that one might be removed now, but another to Eric the car guy. If you don't watch his channel, I recommend you do it. He's a very, very knowledgeable mechanic on YouTube. Um, his The video I watched of him with his method was using uh, channel locks and with pieces of fuel line over the jaws to pinch off a heater core line to let air flow through it to blow a heater core out. I use this. This is a 3 8 ball valve with a 3 8 to quarter inch adapter for an air hose. And this, this double male fitting. And this fits perfectly inside the heater hoses I've had to flush out. I work, I work mainly on GM stuff and this fits the he heater hose perfectly. You can also control the throttle a little bit more. You can't just full bore it because it will blow the heater the hose off and and cooling everywhere makes a big mess, but I think this is a better method. It's just my improvement on their ideas. Bondo scraper, I really do actual body work. Fuel line disconnect tools for GM. Yeah, those are fun. Battery cleaner. Uh, tape measures, got all different kinds in here. Again, chalk lines, some woodworking stuff. I said I need to kind of consolidate the box a bit better. And oil filter wrenches and their battery terminal cleaner. Right, gun sticks. Sockets, oh my sockets. <laughs> I got a set of impact standards, non-impact short half inch. These are the uh, 
screw, sorry, my flashlight because it's dark in here, it's kind of reflecting real bad. The screw extractor ones, yeah, there you can kind of see it. They work, kind of. They'll get you at a pinch if you need to. There's a, if it, it uses a last resort kind of thing. I like weld. If you have access to a welder like I do, you can weld on it on the end, and that's obviously the best way to do it. These will work if you don't have access to that and get you by in a pinch. I do have a set of blue point ones over here that are, I think, work better. They're just a bet. The teeth design is better on these. So if you're going to do buy something like these, this is something I actually recommend over a cheaper Craftsman or, or a Harbor Freight brand. Get the blue point or Mac or whatever brand you prefer, and then just torque bits and various adapters and smaller stuff in the corner. I love these things. You can turn a socket, any ratchet into a, a turn style. I have a couple of ratchets that have these on them built into them, and I love them just because you, you sometimes get them bolts loose and you don't need the whole ratchet, you just need to turn it, but you can't turn it, get down there and turn it by hand. This works great for that. Put an extension on this and it works awesome. They don't make ratchets like that anymore that I found. So I, I, I keep these around for that reason. Adapters, 22 millimeter, working on a lot of GM trucks, like I said. That'll take a lot of, a lot of lug nuts off. And just other quarter inch, you know, Allen's. Impact, these I like. These are also good for getting the screws out. You just have the ones ready and just zip them right off. You got all your sizes right there. Wrenches, got to set it. This is the metric drawer. You know, got the ratcheting ones, the standards, stubbies. SAE metric in this kit. I just keep them all in this drawer. The flare wrenches. This one's, I, I bought it for a lot of GM stuff, like I said, because the fuel line fittings on the fuel filter on the rail of the 90 style Chevy trucks require this 20 millimeter to take them off. And that's why I've got it. I'm not sure what else they fit. That's just why I got it. Again, I own very few snap on tools, and most of them are specialty ones, kind of like this. I don't think against snap on, I just, I'm a DIYer and can't afford their stuff. Their stuff is nice, don't get me wrong, I just can't afford it. And I'm stuck with using Craftsman or other brands like Harbor Freight. Uh, brake bleeder wrench. You gotta have a six point for those. You always round off the bleeders and get lots of leverage with this too. Standard drawer. You got getting ratchets. Battery terminal wrenches. The wrenches are kind of clustered. I don't really use, ever since I got the ratchets, I don't really use these much anymore. Flare nut wrenches. Got some of the bigger ones, big fitting ones in the standard sizes because I use them more. And some of these were just ones I got at auctions in a pile of, on a box of random stuff for a couple bucks. I go out and just buy them. They just, I, they're so cheap I couldn't pass them up at auctions. Ratchets and T handles and extensions. And again, here's the ratchets I was talking about earlier that have this little thumb wheel on them. So if you got an extension, you can hold the ratchet down and hold and just kind of ratchet in and ratchet it out. A very, very cheap Chinese mid flex said that, again, I think it was an auction buy. I just keep it around because I haven't broken it yet, and it's the handful of times I've actually needed a flexed ratchet has been handy to have, even if it's a little cheap thing. It's worked so far for me. Big, big T handle for a half inch. I really like this thing. This thing's big, beefy monster. Spin off. Uh, there's Allen's in here. Other Allen sets. Cheap little Allen keys. Again, auction stuff. And I said T handles. I need to get the metric version of these. Or, I'm sorry. This is the metric version. I need to get a standard set to match it. Cutting drawer, shears, nips, all the fun stuff, utility knives. I also keep my uh, door panel removal tools in here. I just got these like a week ago. They work great. I love it. No more broken clips on the doors of the 90 style Chevy trucks. Those little Christmas tree clips. The guys that worked with them, you know what I'm talking about. Regular plier door, you know, channel locks, needle nose. There's those snap ring pliers that I talked about earlier. They had the interchangeable tips. Those little screws in the end, the tips come out. Ooh, the robo grips, or the round them offs, whichever you want to call them. Big channel locks, uh, MIG welding pliers. Not sure the way those are in here. Those need to be in my welding cart, but. Another random kind of drawer. Got some air tools in here. You know, blow gun, uh, tire pressure gauge, compression tester, fuel tester, impact. Again, there's, there's a bunch of woodworking stuff in here. Like, like I said earlier, that I need to get out of these drawers. I got drywall saws and there's some chisels and other stuff like that buried in here that don't really need to be in here. They just kind of are at the moment. I'm going to get another box to put all the woodworking stuff in separate from all the mechanic type tools. You know, standard screwdrivers, things like that. Mixture of every kind of random brand you could possibly think of. There's Craftsman, there's Cheap, Lowe's, Walmart, Harbor Freight, uh, 
I, th I think there might be a, a Craftsman or some other nice brand in here, but I'm not sure. There's some old ones, too, these old wooden handled ones. Those are old soul stuff. Phillips, don't have nearly as many Phillips as standard. Not sure why, again, a lot of the stuff I've just kind of accumulated over the years. Got the itty bitty screwdrivers and all my markers and things of that sort. Pin punch. Oh boy, adjustable wrenches. I don't know why I have so many of these. I just seem to have accumulated them over the years. I'm not even that old. <laughs> my 20s are not that old, but I just seem to have accumulated a lot of them. I don't know why. There's like there's six or seven in here. Uh, some of these, like this ratcheting one I got as a present, I don't like this. It doesn't really work. I think I tried using it once and just on a fastener that I, I, I wasn't scared to run off because I could get it out just to see if it worked and I wasn't too impressed with it. It's just a marketing gimmick someone thought would be cool to get me. I don't really care for it. This one, I really like. This is a slim. And let me get one for reference here. See how much thinner that is? This, I had to get this to take off an EGR tube on a a 454 Vortec truck and it worked great because th it was a really really thin nut this barely got it but there was no way to get this on there and I didn't have a big enough wrench at the time and even if I had had a big enough wrench you know like an actual standard size combo wrench I would I wouldn't have been able to work because it would have been the thickness of this and not the thickness of this I needed it to be that super super slim profile to get in there and it worked great and torques uh, nut drivers Nut splitter, rivet gun, feeler gauges, picks. Got my impact drive over here. This is great for getting rusty fasteners loose. Just, you guys don't need to use that. Let's go drawer. Good DVOM. Cheap piece of crap DVOM. It doesn't read right. Not really sure why I keep it in here. I guess it's a backup in case that dies. It will read like DC voltage for batteries and stuff, but I don't trust it for ohms. Uh, test light, crimpers soldering tools. Again, something I stole from Eric the car guy to just house wire with alligator clips and you put the soldering joint in there and it helps hold it together. Works great. And finally, the beading drawer. Tie rod separator, hammer, pry bars, all that is. Scraper, like I said, again with the carpentry tools. I need to get some of these out of here and get a better box. Uh, got my impact. It's more of a impact for doing screws, but I don't use it for lug nuts. I have them. They, air problem for that. This is just like, if I got a bunch of bolts, like taking an intake or something off bolts that aren't super high torque, this works great for zipping them all off real fast. A nice big breaker bar, Harbor Freight brand 30 inch. A lot of people don't like these. I, I haven't been able to break one yet. My dad has one as well, and he's had it for years, and we haven't ever been able to break it. I've put a, I've even put pipes on this thing three foot long and been bending the crap out of it to where this thing's you know, twisting and flexing, and I still haven't broke it, so... For 12 bucks, I'm happy with it. And I got this big old three foot blow gun as well. That's great for clearing out uh, coolant lines or any kind of fitting down on a motor that's really hard to get. You need to blow dirt or something off of a flush of line. That works great for that. And there's, I got other stuff. You know, there's tools, cases, and kits piled in here. I got, you know, stuff everywhere. I'll do a review on those later. This was just meant for the toolbox and what's in it. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it, guys.